Let us go into the house of the Lord. Anybody grateful to be in the house just one more time? We could have been anywhere where we are in the house of the Lord. And he has graced us to be here today. Amen. The song says, only thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy.
hands together for Jesus. Come on, because he does so much for you. You couldn't even tell him one day. You couldn't tell him in one week. It'll take you years to talk about how good God is. Come on, just open up your mouth again and put your hands together and just give him a rush. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. Whoa. Oh, 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 Jesus.
So precious, Father, that any one chooses while you're here. We pray right now. We turn on you from down here, God. But we pray right now, Lord, that you begin to move by your spirit within this room. Oh, God, begin to heal bodies. Oh, God, begin to heal souls. Oh, God, begin to heal minds today. Oh, in the name of Jesus. right now, Jesus. Oh, God. And Lord, even as we're praying right now, Lord, we thank you for moving in and out of the pews today. Oh, God, begin to touch those that are dealing with anxiety today. Oh, God, somebody just got an unlawful diagnosis from the doctor and Lord, we pray right now that you touch livers today. Oh, God, begin to touch hearts and cardiovascular areas today. Oh, God, begin to touch kidneys today. Oh God, we come against oh God, those things that are dealing with the mind today. Oh God, these medications that ain't working, God. We come against it right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for just being here on tonight. I'm going to feel a familiar face to some of you. Hallelujah. But an unfamiliar face to a lot of you. I thank God for being here on tonight. Hallelujah. I want y'all to stand up one more time and make some Holy Ghost crazy noise for one of the best pastors this side of heaven. Your pastor here in the Black Missionary Baptist Church. Pastor Travis Miles! And you can't just sit by and look. He's got a woman that's right by his side today. Y'all gotta make some noise. The way you know it is on today, hallelujah. And y'all sitting down just a little too quick. Because I brought my better half in here tonight, too. I want y'all to make some noise for Lady Jackson on today. She is my rib, my backbone, my neck bone. Hallelujah. I, I tell people sometimes I'm the, uh, the player and she's the referee. Hallelujah. She be blowing that whistle. You need to get in there, clean that up. <laughs> but I thank God for her. She makes me better. Yeah. Hallelujah. If your wife or your spouse don't make you better, you need to pray about it. Yeah. Hallelujah. If your fiance ain't working out for you, you need to pray about it. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. But I bring you greetings from the Blow Your Trumpet Ministries over in St. Louis Healing, Deliverance, and Restoration Church, where my pastor is uh, none other than Marcus Mickles. You all were able to enjoy him just a few weeks ago. Hallelujah. I come out from under him and I give him uh, uh, the, 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 the honor that he deserves as being my new pastor. I originally came out of Church of God in Christ Congregational, uh, located in Edwardsville, Illinois. And God moved me because of the gift that was down inside of me. After being at a church for 42 years, it was a hard transition. Some people are not uh, so um, uh, easy to stay at one church for too long. We got a lot of church hoppers. I heard one preacher say that some, some churches are just like a bus. Look, some people get off, get, uh, get on for the long ride, and then other folks just getting off at every stop. Uh, Hallelujah. Anytime the preacher ain't preaching something you like, you ready to go. Come on. If the word of God don't challenge you, we ain't preaching. If they don't challenge you to be better, I'm not preaching. Inspirational message. Hallelujah. I do want to inspire you, but I want to challenge you. Hallelujah. So we want to get into the word tonight. Hallelujah. Thank God for the praise and worship team. Thank God for uh, my good friend, Mr. Paul Herbert over here. Hallelujah. And 
I see some other people, Sister Keisha, and anybody in here that's knitted from the quilt of ministry, I give honor to you today. You're a familiar face. I remember you. You are also a minister as well, right? In the black sweatshirt? Yes. I remember you. I remember some other people. Give honor to all of you on tonight. I do count it a privilege and an honor. Never a uh, stress or a strain to get out here and to preach a word to the people of God. Hallelujah. I come out from under a fiery preacher, but I cannot be Marcus Nichols today. I got to be Jerry Jackson. Is that okay? Can I be Jerry today? All right. So, so you're going to get Jerry today, but I'm going to give you a word. And, and nevertheless, there is a word from the Lord for you today. There's a word designed for you. It's designed to challenge you. It's designed to encourage you. It's designed to comfort you. If you receive that, just clap your hands and say yes. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to get into the word. Uh, Romans chapter 1. Starting at the 15th verse. Hallelujah. You can stand for the reading of the word. Pastor Noah said, get up there while it's hot, while the worship is going on. I said, okay, all right. I was looking for him to get up and do an introduction, but thank God that Jesus already introduced me. Hallelujah. All right. Says, uh, the 15th verse says, so as much as it is in me, or in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. The 16th verse says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and then also to the Greek. 17th verse says, For therein in, in is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. Somebody say, The just shall live by faith. That means that we have to live by faith. Anybody in here uh, count yourself as just? All right. And you're going to live by faith. Ain't that, ain't that right? 18 verse says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. I'm reading from the King James Version. And an unrighteousness of men. And then it says, Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's why it's important for preachers to preach the word right. Yeah. Because if we preach the word wrong, you're going to receive it wrong, and then it becomes a resonation in your spirit, and before you know it, you're ready to fight for what's wrong. So I got to give you the word right, so you believe it right, and you deliver it right. Ain't that right? Hallelujah. 19th verse says, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. 20th verse. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power. Somebody say eternal power. And Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Somebody say, where is your power? Where is your power? Somebody say it again, where is your power? That's the text that we're coming from. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We ask that God add a blessing and an endurance to the readers and the understanding and those that are enduring the doctrine of his word today. Hallelujah. So we want to talk about the power of faith. How many people in here just believe you got a little faith? What did the Bible say? If you got faith, the great of a mustard seed, you'll be able to what? Move a mountain? Okay, we're going to talk about faith today. But we want to talk about the opposite of faith. What is the opposite of faith? Pastor Norris said fear. That's what we want to talk about on this passage. Fear is a tactic of the enemy. The enemy uses fear to, uh, to elevate depression, to elevate oppression, low self-esteem, and in most cases, no self-esteem. He wants to use this fear to make your faith counteract your, uh, your, uh, your, your uh, progressiveness in life. He wants to keep you regressing and going back to what you used to do. He wants to keep you regressing and going back to being the person that you used to be. Hallelujah. There was a time that you that, that could nobody cuss at you without you cussing them out. Hallelujah. Now we've obtained the power to stop cussing with our mouths, but we ain't stopped cussing people out in our mind. Somebody said, Lord, clean my mind up. 
you, if you know anything about the mind, the mind is a part of the flesh. So your mind is never going to be saved. That's why he said, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. And the word meaning being let is meaning that you've got to allow God to infiltrate your mind. And that's on a daily basis. Hallelujah. And then he also said, what? If you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you what? In perfect peace. So what does the devil do? He tries to infiltrate every area of your mind where Jesus is not. So if he can get you in this area, he don't care about God being in that area. So what we got to do is let this mind infiltrate our mind. Somebody say, infiltrate our mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not to give the devil no space and no say so in my life. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're listening to the wrong voices. Sometimes you need to look at your phone and when you see that person that you know going to knock you off your square, you need to learn how to push decline. Somebody say, push decline. Hallelujah. Or some of those text messages. If you got an iPhone, just leave them in a red. Hallelujah. You don't even need to respond. And if you ain't got no iPhone, where you, what, what uh, year are you living in? I'm messing with you. Somebody's still living in 99. Got one of them great big old cell phones. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I came that you may have life. And that more abundantly. That abundant life is not necessarily those monetary things, a nice car, a nice house, a good looking wife. But a lot of times that abundant life is just peace of mind. Sometimes that abundant life is just me being able to get along with my loved ones. Hallelujah. Sometimes that abundant life is just me being able to forgive somebody. Come on now. There's so much power in forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. If you hold on forgiveness, you, it's like you're drinking poison and hoping somebody else gets sick. Hallelujah. Learn how to forgive. Oh, God. And it's hardest and easier said than done. Especially when that person has done the same thing to you over and over and over and again. And then you decide you want to forgive them, but you already know they're going to turn around and do it again. It takes Jesus to help you to forgive, don't it? Talk about your situation. Hallelujah. Am I doing all right? Hallelujah. She said he was going to supply all your needs along with that abundant life according to his riches and glory. So the thing about him being the supplier of every need is not necessarily you getting down praying and asking God, Lord, I want the million dollars. I wish we could get down and pray and God will just react like that. Or, or publishers clearing house come and knock on my door and tell me I got $7,000 a week for life coming. Hallelujah. How many would love that? Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, send me the money. <laughs> Lord, send me the riches. And I promise you I'm going to bless somebody. Is that what you said, Lord? If you bless me, I'm going to bless somebody. And some of y'all so scared you, even if you get the money, you still ain't going to get nobody <laughs> Come on now. Jesus gave his life. Jesus, we're talking about Resurrection Sunday, and I'm going to get to that. I'm trying to stick with my notes here. But what happens is we have to understand that leaders are teaching us to be confident and encouraged of us in the word of God and in the understanding of who God really is. So what's happening is a lot of these uh uh, preachers and pastors are insecure and they, they walk around in fear and what it happens is when they walk around in fear they're, they're unloading their uh, restrictions and limitations onto the people that's my prayer Lord take away any fear out of me for whoever's going to listen to me and that, that are uh, consuming the word of God for me Lord I want to be an encouragement to them I don't want to discourage them I don't want to give them limitations and restrictions because I got limitations and restrictions in me. I want you to be able to live the best life that you can live. I want you to be able to walk and be encouraged. God sent me all the way from Edwardsville, Illinois to let you know that you got what it takes to make it. Hello, hello somebody. You better know that you are somebody. God made you. He made somebody great. Thank you, Jesus. And it's a slap in the face to God when you go to telling people, I'm not good enough. I can't make it. And God says, no, I made you to make it. I built you to make it. I gave you the grip to make it. And you want to tell me that when I made you, you 
you are not fearfully and wonderfully made, don't stop God in his face. You are somebody. Thank you, Jesus. I hope I ain't yelling too loud. Boy, this mic sounds loud. I like this mic. This mic is it's hot. Yes. Come on. Somebody say, I am somebody. I am somebody. I got a mean look on my face because I mean that you're somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Some people got mean looks on their face and you need to stop mean mugging folk and then wonder why they ain't nice to you. Start being nice to folks. What he said, be friendly. Hallelujah. What you do, you first show yourself friendly. Thank you, Jesus. But we don't want to put restrictions into the minds of the people. Hallelujah. Because they will think that, that, that I'm only as good as my pastor says that I am. Hallelujah. I had to get up under a pastor that was not afraid of the, of the uh, anointing that was up on my life. Not saying I came out from one that was. But I needed somebody that could cultivate this gift. I'm not anybody's pastor yet. But when I do, I want to be ready to feed the people of God. Hallelujah. God called me the shepherd. He's going to give me sheep to shepherd. And how, many, how many know uh, that sheep are not as ignorant as they seem, but they do follow their leader? They hear the voice of their shepherd. Hallelujah. And they hang on to the words of their shepherd. So the things that Pastor Norris is teaching you, he has helped a whole lot of y'all in this room. Hallelujah. I know that this man prophesied to me years ago, and I'm living the prophecy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for your man of God. Give him a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God has a greater call on your life. Thank you, Jesus. You're not just a, 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 a mishap. You might, you're not just a mistake. Hallelujah. The devil might try to make you feel like, oh, I was born, but I wish I wasn't here. Anybody ever felt like I wish I wasn't here? Or things would be better if I wasn't here? Or I just wish I could just give up and just, and just leave and move out of state and not have to talk to nobody? Why? Because I'm feeling some type of way about what people think about me. Hallelujah. We got to get away from the place that we're trying to live for other people. We got a young generation that's coming up and they're living for likes. And when they're not affirmed and when they're not confirmed, they're ready to go kill themselves. Oh, boy, shot. We, we've never seen such a depressed generation walking in fear. Oh, my God. And this suicide demon is running rampant. Hallelujah. I come against the demon of suicide right now in the name of Jesus. I don't even care if you're online today. I come against the spirit that makes you feel like nobody loves you, that you're ready to give up, that you're ready to quit, that you're ready to throw in the towel. I come against that spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost that's within me. Somebody say, yay. Thank you, Jesus. Sick and tired of the devil feeling like he can wreak havoc whenever he wants to in my life. I'm telling you right now, you bruise my heel, I'm going to bruise your head. Somebody lift up your life for you say, get out of my life, devil. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, get out of my marriage, devil. Somebody say, get out of my finances, devil. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to bruise your head. I tell the story. I broke my Achilles tendon a few months back. And I was down and out. Ended up in a booth for three or four months. Couldn't walk. And I'm just now back to walking. Thank God I'm ready to shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, the devil couldn't keep me down. But since he bruised my heel, I'm going to bruise his head. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Coming against the enemy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We are an army in the, in, the, in, the, in the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that are going to fight. Anybody ready to fight? And I ain't talking about fighting with fists. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hallelujah. But we fight in the spirits against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. When you learn how to fight in the spirit, you'll find out, you'll find out, I ain't even hardly got to say nothing to nobody. And then they'll start speaking to me again. When I get down on my knees and get to praying, I'm finding out that that boss at work that's been giving me so many problems, he either going to get fired or I'm going to get elevated above him. Thank you, Jesus. You know, we be feeling sometimes like, Jesus, just kill him, Jesus. I want him gone. Get him out of here. God is saying, no, just pray for them that despitefully use you. You got to learn how to love your enemies. Come on now, anybody love their enemies? Don't lie. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Am I preaching all right, sir? Yeah. Hallelujah. So we can't preach like we mad for God because God ain't that mad at you. But he is mad at folks that do you wrong. That's why we always pray, Lord, bless those that despitefully use us. Lord, bless those that curse us. Lord, help us to be better when it comes to dealing with people. Because sometimes that's what we need to be delivered from is people. But thank God that God ain't that mad. I used to come up in, in churches where people would preach like they mad for God. And God ain't even that mad at you. You are the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. When he made you a young man, he made something great. Hallelujah. When he made you a young woman, he made something great. When I look at y'all, I see the greatness of God. Thank you, Jesus. I see the shine of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I remember, I remember when I used to come here and play the guitar some years ago. And I remember being in the, uh, playing for the choir and playing for different individuals that came here and, and singing and whatnot. And I used to look and say, man, Myra and Taylor is some kind of preaching. But I never thought I'd be standing in this pulpit five, six, 15 years later, but God knows everything. And back then, I wasn't living saved. Back then, I was still smoking weed. Y'all didn't know it. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm still coming to church on Sunday mornings with hangovers. How many know that God will deliver you from your hangover? Thank you, Jesus. How many know he'll, he'll erase the residue? From the sins that you committed in your former life. How I many you know God will clean you all the way up? And he'll pick you way down. Or he'll pick you up if he had to reach way down. Come on. God help me preach it. Did he have to reach way down and get some of y'all? Yeah, he had to get me. Yes, he did. He had to come get me from being a womanizer and doing things the way I wanted to do it, even though my daddy was a preacher and told me not to. Thank you, Jesus. Just because you grew up in church don't mean you in church. Hallelujah. A lot of us growing up around the church, but all of us ain't in church. You ain't in church until you accept Jesus and start living for him and let him lead you. Thank you, Jesus. You're just a part of the church. I'm just coming and playing the music. I'm just playing the guitar. I'm making other people shout. But then I ain't got no Holy Ghost down inside of me to say, don't go back out there and smoke them cigarettes no more. Hallelujah. How many know he'll erase the rise of you? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, the faith, the faith that we need comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. God sent me all the way from Evelson. They said, uh, 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 how can he hear without a preacher? How can, the, how can he preach unless he be sent? How many know God called me and sent me all the way from Edwardsville, Illinois to let you know that you are somebody, that you're not condemned, that Jesus loves you, that Jesus is turning things around in your life. And he don't care what color you are. He don't care what nationality you are. Jesus loves us all. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you for your power. Somebody say, where is your power? Somebody say, where is your power? Thank you, Jesus. So we get out of this depression and these oppressions. Sometimes you've got to learn how to talk your, your uh, situations out. How do, we, how do we deal with certain things that are eating us up from the inside? you got a pastor here. He should be someone that you can trust to tell your deepest, darkest secrets to. The best way for you to get over your past, the best way for you to get over those idiosyncrasies is to talk about it. The more you hold on to things, the more it eats you up from the inside out. The, the more it starts an infection that usually becomes heart attacks, that usually becomes cancers, that usually becomes blood disorders, that usually starts to affect the body to amputations. Why? Because of, because of stress that we are not able to talk about. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to pull you out of the rut that you're in. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm looking around for my towel. I don't know what I did with it. Anyway, <laughs> we are in a place now where God is using people that he has never used before. We're in a place now where your faith is going to carry you places that you've never been before. We're in a place now where God is starting to turn things around in business owners and entrepreneurs. I'm speaking to business owners and entrepreneurs right now. Great beyond double, shotgun, double. Lift your hands. Are you an entrepreneur? I hear the Spirit of God saying today, woman of God,
that there's an idea that you had already started on that he's about to breathe on. There's an idea that you've been working on that seems like it has not come to fruition. But I hear the Spirit of God saying that even in your labor and in your prayer, he has heard you. And even the statement, uh, the, it seems that there are, have been failures along the way. There have been people that turned their back on you. There are people that are verbally saying, I got your back. And then they ain't got your back. But God says he's going to place people in your life that's got your back. He's going he's gonna to place people in your life that are able to assist what you're about to do. And even in your uh, spiritual life, I see an anointing on you even for ministry. And I hear God saying he's going to raise you up in this hour, not only to just be a speaker in the house, but he's going to take you into the marketplace to be a witness for him. And when you witness, you're going to see people's lives change, even in the high corporate areas of the, of the world. You better get ready because you're going to travel this country extensively, even selling a product that I see that you're coming up with. So you better get ready, woman of God. I, 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 I want to extend to you to plow deeper. I want you to. I want to extend to you to just look for the things of God on a daily basis. Continue to cry out to Him, and He's even going to save a loved one that's real close to you as well that you've been praying for. So you better get ready. If I be a man of God, you're going to see it happen. I'm talking like six to eight months from now, you're going to see a whole new you. You're going to see a whole new thing. And y'all better clap y'all's hands and give God praise for what he's about to do in her life. Oh God, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And one thing my pastor always said, if God's mouth is too big, to prophesy to one, and one, if it's good for one, he's good for all. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Any more entrepreneurs in here? Thank you, Jesus. Anybody who's trying to start a business already got a business started? You got two businesses already. Which, which one is the most lucrative? The barbershop? You got your own shop and you work with somebody? Work with somebody. Well, you better get ready, man of God. Not that I know already know what you're doing, but you, you've already contemplated starting it. So God says, go ahead and start it and watch him breathe on it. Hallelujah. I even see you being a big support to your pastor in a whole lot of ways. And that's going to be a blessing to you as well. You better get ready, man of God, because even outside of business, I see people that you know that are in high places that actually got some real cash. And you better get ready because they're being they're, they're talking about you even right now. Maybe not this minute, but they have been mentioning your name. And so what happens is when God blesses us, he usually uses somebody that, that's in a higher position that can write the check. Come on now. What he said, the, uh, the, the, uh, the blessings of the Lord or the, uh, uh, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Come on, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. So who got your money, Beyonce? Who got your money? Future. All right, who got your money? Cardi B. Come on. Y'all know who y'all listening to? Roddy Rich. That's who's got your money. Hallelujah. Unless they change their ways and start blessing people for real. God can change anybody. Yes, he can. Hallelujah. Hearing by the word of God. How many of you know it's power and knowledge? Thank you, Jesus. The power of knowledge. They, uh, they had a cliche or a uh, phrase that said, knowledge is power. So the more you know, in Christ, a lot of times it works out for your good, but then it's not so good to know things and then not do them. It's good to know that God is about his righteousness, but it's not so good if you're not living righteous. Peter said in his, uh, what, uh, chapter 2, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, 21, he said it'd be better for men not to know the way of righteousness and then after they know it, not to do it or to turn away from what's right. Hallelujah. How many know that God has a way of, of, of rewarding us for the things that we do right, but then also scolding us, but not to the point where he wants to break you all the way out. 
So sometimes when we're scolded, even if the, if the pastor has to rebuke you, it's not for you to fall all the way out of church. It's to make you better. Hallelujah. My dad was one that would, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't spare a rod for you. My dad whooped me. I got a lot of whoopings. I'm the oldest brother, and I got into stuff. Hallelujah. But there was some of them whoopings I felt like, man, this should have been child abuse. But how many know it never did kill me, but it made me better? And I'm grateful now for them whoopings. I'm grateful now for them training me up as a child and letting me know the way it should go. And when I got old, I never turned back from it. Hallelujah. He even had some situations. Can I tell my testimony just a little bit? I've even, even, even been in the jail system. Oh, God. I don't even know why I'm saying this. Even been in, even been in the jail system. I, I'm about to help somebody. God came to visit me in the jail cell. Hallelujah. I'm running with the wrong people. Doing things that I ain't got no business. Turn out to be an accessory to something just because I was there. Sometimes you can't hang out with certain people. Hallelujah. shot. Because people will put you with them, folks. Hallelujah. And if they feisty, then folks don't think you feisty. They're going to be ready to fight you. I'm running with the wrong crew. Found myself in a situation and didn't know how I was going to get out. But how many know God came to see about me? Hey! And I know I don't look like I ever been in no trouble, do I? Yeah. Done a whole lot of stuff that most folks would look at me and say, no, nah, brother, you don't look like it. No, nah, brother, and you, there's a whole lot of stuff that you done been through, my brother, and you don't even look like what you've been through. Hallelujah. God brought you out. Hallelujah. Without a doubt. Power of knowledge. The, the, uh, the word knowledge comes from a Greek word called gnosis. Somebody say gnosis. It says spiritual knowledge or insight into humanity's real uh, nature as divine, leading to deliverance of the divine humanity from the constraints of earthly existence. Sometimes we're uh, constricted with uh, humanistic thinking. When you know better, you do better. What good is it for you to know what not to do and then go and do it anyway? I should, we, should, we shouldn't have to get up here Sunday after Sunday and preach to you about your sin. Because why? Y'all, most of y'all think that y'all grown anyway. So if you're so grown, you should know better not to do it. So I should be able to encourage you every Sunday and pull you out of your pit instead of knocking you around about what you did last night. Hallelujah. You already know that it's unlawful for a man to sleep with another man's wife. Ain't no reason for me to tell you that. Come on. You already know it's unlawful for a woman to sleep with another woman's husband. Hallelujah. And, I, and while we're talking about wives, me and my wife is a reconciliation story. Can I tell my testimony just a little bit? Yeah. 2008, we got married. But by 2010, we were divorced. Woo! Divorced for seven years. Seven years, we didn't even talk to each other. So mad because we had fell out with each other. St stabbing each other with verbal daggers. Uh, uh, verbal, uh, verbal abuse, talking about each other, cussing each other out, and we were supposed to be saved. Seven years. How many know that sometimes tra traumatic things come to make things better? Whoa! It's hard to thank God for traumatic things. It's hard to thank God for dramatic things. But my brother passed away in 2017. God rest his soul. And it brought me and my wife back together. And we began to talk and we began to, uh, we began to uh, understand each other a little bit better. And then, out of nowhere, my wife apologized to me. I said, where did this come from? Because we both walked in so much pride, we never wanted to say I'm sorry. How many know that you need to learn how to humble yourself enough to say you're sorry? Hallelujah, forgiveness. If you unload yourself from some of all that unforgiveness, don't you know God will lift you up about it? So I said, no, I'm not going to jump back into no marriage. I don't trust her yet. How many know that you ain't always got to love her? Let me get this right. You ain't always got to uh, not forgive a person, but you do need to forgive them. That don't mean you always trust them. So I have forgiven her. Years before that, I had told God, Lord, I forgive everybody. I don't want to hold on to nothing. I don't want to, I don't want to 
one that hold me down. I don't want to feel like I'm still holding resentment against this person, that person. I don't care what they did to me, Lord. I'm done with it. I'm leaving it on the altar. Hallelujah. And I want somebody in here to lift your hands because there has been resentment and unforgiveness and things held in the heart in some of these people that are in this room, whether your brother, your sister, your best friend, your granny, your mama, your daddy, even if your daddy wasn't there, you got to learn how to forgive him. Even if your mama was a crackhead, you got to learn how to forgive her. Even if your brother slept with your wife, you got to forgive him. Even if your sister slept with your husband, you got to forgive him. Come on now, we got to learn how to forgive her. Thank you, Jesus. So we dated for two years. And I told myself, I said, Lord, well, I, I see that she didn't humble herself. I see that things have changed around a little bit. Let me go ahead and give it a try. And God said, you already knew that that was your wife. And I said, well, she divorced me. He said, but once you're married in the spirit, you're always married. How many know that no matter what you do, you are married to God? No matter where you go and what you do, you can backslide out of here. You can say, I ain't coming back to the church. I'm walking around with church hurt. I'm walking around with this and that and the other, but you're still married to God. So I told her, I said, well, we're going to go ahead and we're going to try this again. How many know it's better the second time around? I was telling somebody the other day, I said, uh, I said, yeah, if somebody uh, wanted to hop at my wife, I said, they, they had nine years to do it. Because I tell you what, if they try to holler at us now, they in violation. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's consequences and repercussions that have come behind that and some more stuff. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> It's G14 classified what might happen to you. That's my wife. And don't she look good at y'all? Thank you, Jesus. And she accepted me, y'all, even after some mistakes that I've made. So what I mean by that is we got to learn how to accept folks for who they are. Yeah. We know that they're not perfect, no, no. but we forgive them anyway. The love of Christ will make you love people beyond their faults just because he loved you beyond your faults. Come on, we, love, we, we serve a God that's full of grace and mercy. Hallelujah, and his grace and mercy is going to follow you all the rest of your days. So why would I want to walk in that? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we, 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 we have to understand that sometimes uh, knowledge can be, uh, it can come against you if you if you got too much knowledge. Sometimes there are, there are preachers out here that have so much knowledge yeah. that they start to analyze the Bible to the point where they don't even want to believe the Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. They're teaching a doctrine that uh, is called inclusion and they're Telling everybody that you can make it into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Now, I will tell you this much. I will not condemn somebody out of a place that I have never been. I can't tell you that you ain't going to make it into heaven. But I will tell you this. What the word of God says is that all sin is unrighteousness. Hallelujah. But just because you experiment with certain things does not mean it's an orientation. So I tell my God all the time, experimentation doesn't necessarily equal orientation. So you might try some things and it might sound, it might feel good for the moment. But that does not make it an orientation. When they ask you what's your orientation, you're either straight or you're the other. Hallelujah. Just because you tried it does not make your orientation wrong for the rest of your life. Just because you experimented with crack don't mean don't make you a crackhead for the rest of your life. Come on, just because you experimented with a little bottle, it don't make you an alcoholic for the rest of your life. Come on. We live in a society where everything is included now. Everything is accepted now. But God ain't accepted everything. Come on, it's a hard message to preach. When you, when you know that there are people out there, I was watching TV just, just this morning, and they were on there talking about, oh, well, my daughter, she's, she, she goes that way, and, and, and then my son, he goes that way. Does that mean that they're unnatural? Or does, yes, the Bible says it's unnatural. I'm not here to beat nobody up, but I'm just telling you the honest to God truth. Experimentation doesn't necessarily, necessarily equal orientation. So just because you try it, it don't mean that that's who you are. Come on now. Just because you dibbled and dabbled in a little bit of this and a little bit of that doesn't make your whole life messed up. Come on. Say, let this mind be in you. It's also in Christ Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. And the, the, the enemy will try to overload you. Anytime you give him a little space, you give him an inch, and he'll be your ruler. You give him a little bit of your time, and the Bible, um, not the Bible, but I heard a, a person say that sin will take you further than you want to go. It'll keep you longer than you want to say, stay, and it'll cost you more than you want to pay. Now, come on now, if you want to be in that, in that category, just keep on sinning and watch it cost you so much money, you wish you hadn't, uh, hadn't gotten yourself into debt. Come on now, if I, could, if I could get some of the money back that I spent kicking it, I'd probably be a millionaire right now. Yeah. Two times over, Pastor C. So, we, that, so we're shaping up our minds. We're getting our man, mind together because why? I want my knowledge and the things that I think to be like Christ. I don't want to go to work and go to school and go to these different places and my mind is in disarray to the point where can't nobody say nothing to me. I don't even speak. If you look at somebody more than 20, 20 seconds, you need to say hi. I, don't get, I, can't, I can't get with these folks that look at you and don't know how to speak. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You got to learn how to speak to folks. If you learn how to speak, they'll speak back to you. Hallelujah. So moving on. You got to be careful what you listen to. And this is going to be like my last point. I hope I'm not taking up too much time. I hope this is, is reaching you. Hallelujah. What I mean by that is the word music. Somebody say music. When you dissect the word music, the first part of the word is muse. The last part of the word is psych. So what happens is music psychologically amuses you. So what happens is, we hear a certain beat. I remember back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, there was a song that came out that sounded like this. Y'all know what that song is, right? Another one bites the dust. You see how quickly that connected with your spirit? But they, but they, but they proved that that song, if you played it backwards, it was inducing suicide. Because they said when you play the song backwards, it was saying, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. Music psychologically amuses you. The future can drop a song that's talking about Molly Percocet, Molly, Molly Percocet. What you think gonna happen? He's gonna have a million kids out here trying to do the Molly drug and take Percocets. Why? Because that music psychologically amuses you and induces a, a want for a drug that you ain't never even tried. You gotta be careful what you're listening to. Y'all know me, I'm a guitar player and I love Stevie Ray Vaughan, I love Prince and B.B. King, but when I'm trying to get next to God, I can't listen to B.B. King. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I got a, I got a wife and, and we, 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 can't, we can't get next to each other till Jesus can work it out. Yeah. Hallelujah, and, and uh, Jesus be the center of it all. Come on now. And, and so I'm going to listen to something that gets me in the mood with my wife. But how many know that most of the music that I listen to is going to feed something in my spirit and it's going to be God-like? Come on! That's the power of music. Hallelujah. When, when, when Paul, Paul Herbert strikes that keyboard or strikes that organ, he's got a way with that music that will move your spirit. Hallelujah. But thank God he's got the right heart. I can receive what that man is playing. Back in the day, they didn't even let the, good, the people on the music if you wasn't saved. Right. Hallelujah. But then they came to their senses and realized, hey, we need these musicians. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't care if he smoked the blunt before he came to church. At least he played good. <laughs> it's musician. I'm telling you right now, I know plenty of musicians that go to the club and make people do the dance, and then they come to church and make you shout. Come on. One thing I told God, Lord, I'm contaminating my guitar playing when I came back to the church. Because I was the one playing in the clubs. I was in the one making people drink. I was making people dance and slobber all over themselves. Hallelujah. Play that funky whip music, white boy. Yeah, that was me playing that song. Come on. No offense to anybody. <laughs> you got to be careful what you listen to. Not against the R&B music, ain't no R&B song gonna sing you to hell. Hallelujah! I don't believe a cigarette will sing you to hell, but it's defiling your body, and it ain't good for you. Come on, now, one of the leading causes to cancer. 
Why would you do it? Hallelujah. It's power in your tongue. And then this is my last point. So we have to be careful what we say. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So what you say, especially when you feel with the Holy Spirit, you got to be careful what you say. When God is in you, there are certain stuff you can speak over your family and cause disruption. There's certain things that you can speak over your family and cause them to prosper. When you go around and you're telling your kids they're bad and you're ugly and you're your daddy's son and all that kind of stuff, that stuff starts being implanted in those little children's spirit. Before you know it, they feel like they're bad. They feel like I'm no, I'm no good. Mama said I wasn't nothing. You ain't no better than your old uh, dirty daddy and all that old mess. Come on, we got to be careful what we say with our mouths. Hallelujah. Most people that, that we noticed have been knocked upside their head. It was because of something they said. Be careful what you say. Somebody say, be careful what you say. Hallelujah. Be careful how you say it. Thank you, Jesus. Knowledge is knowing what to say. Wisdom is knowing how and when to say it. Come on now. So we want to ask God for knowledge and wisdom. Not just knowledge, but knowledge and wisdom. Somebody say, God, give me knowledge and wisdom. Man of God, lift your hands right here with the dark sweater on right here. You. Yes, sir. Just lift your hands. I feel God saying to me that you have a call on your life. I don't know if you're saved today. Are you saved? You are saved? Uh, there's a, a deeper depth of the Holy Spirit that God wants to infill you with in this season. He says that you are one of the apples of his eye. Hallelujah. God not only uh, cares about you, but he likes you, he loves you, and there's so many gifts down inside of you that has not been, uh, has not been uh, upgraded, upmoved, updone yet. But he says in this season, he's about to use like you've never been used before. It's going to behoove you, young man, to draw no, draw near to your pastor. Is this your pastor right here? Draw near, draw near, draw near, draw near. I hear God saying because there's a word in his mouth. There's some direction that he's bringing to you. There's some deep, dark hurts that have been down inside of you. God wants to deal with. Sometimes as men, we we, we, we strong. We a man. I'm going to hold on to this. I'm going to deal with that. But God says he wants you to be vulnerable enough to talk to your pastor because he's dealing with you with some stuff going on in the inside. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you, young man? There's something going on here, right here, right here, right here, right here. There's even a ministry up on you that God wants to pull out of you. Come here. Can I just, I just want to touch hands with you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Anybody know how to get a prayer through? Just go ahead and begin to pray. What's your name? Carlos. So Lord, we pray for Carlos today, God, and the call that's up on his life. Oh God, the ministry that I believe that's up on him, God. We pray right now, Lord, even for his spouse. We thank you right now, Lord Jesus, right now. Even the confusion that has, that has gone on even around the household. Oh God, we pray right now, Lord, that you soften his heart. Oh God, bring forgiveness in his heart. Oh God, bring out uh, Bring solitude in his heart today. Oh, God, begin to touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Oh, God, as you complete the work, we pray right now, Lord, that you move by your spirit around Carlos right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and even as you're raising him up, oh, God, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we call it forth right now, and we call forth even financial blessings over his life. Oh, God, new ideas, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor for what you're about to do in Carlos' life. Somebody open up your mouth and just give God a praise.
receiving the Holy Spirit. But I feel like God is just calling you higher. He's calling you higher. He's calling you higher. Somebody say higher.
you've been looking and searching and got love in the wrong places, but God says he's about to move by his spirit. You better get ready. He's going to heal your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Somebody in here just begin to pray. Touch her around her ankles. Touch her around her ankles. We come against sweat. swelling in the legs and feet. We come against swelling in the legs and feet. Yeah!
decide. You are worth his time. And if it's his will, it's his bill. Thank you, Jesus. If it's God's will, it's his bill. He can afford you. Hey, God can afford you, man of God. He can afford you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody lift your hands. Lift your hands all over the room. Oh, God, I thank you right now. Oh, God, we ask that you touch her legs right now. Begin to touch that hip, that hip, that hip, that hip. I see a hip issue. Is that what it is? is it, it's not a hip issue, no leg issues at all? You good? You didn't want no prayer? Okay. That's right. All right. All right. All right. Hey, I'm good. Somebody say, I'm good. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I thank God for a pastor that will teach you faith. The biggest thing that I talked about was faith, and I know that that was a connection between me and him when he talks about faith. Because sometimes uh, we, we talk about the miracles and the signs and wonders that God has performed, but all the time do we believe in it? Sometimes we don't believe in it. The thing about Jesus was he was uh, he was unable to do very, very few miracles. Yeah, he was unable to do a lot of miracles in his hometown. Why? Because of their unbelief. So thank God for a pastor that promotes belief, that promotes that I'm good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. But I hope that God promoted your faith tonight to believe in you once again. To give you the faith that he can do whatever you ask him to do. And he's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you've asked for. Hallelujah. According to the power of the Holy Ghost that works within you. Hallelujah. So precious Father, as your hands are lifted, we thank you for the outpouring of your spirit. Thank you right now, Lord, for the anointing that's even in the room. Oh, God, we pray right now, Lord, that every word that has went out, Lord, is not going to return to us void. We shall see testimonies. We shall hear of your goodness and your mercy and your manifestation. And we just give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor for the healing that has taken place in here. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, that the sacrifices of God are broken and a contrite heart. And there was some brokenness and there was some contriteness, Lord, that has happened. But, Lord, we know that they have sacrificed themselves to want to serve you. And we thank you right now, Lord, for promoting your name, promoting your faith, and promoting your manifestation in the room tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody just give God a hand, praise. Say he got to die. Oh, but the dearest the consolation, he's going to get back up. 
Amen. And so even though you're down, he's going to get back up. But we want you to sow a faith seed tonight. And I want you, even if you're sowing traditionally, as the deacons are coming, amen, if you're going to sow traditionally here on the campus, or you're going to sow online, New Bethel MB Church, amen, dot com. Go to the Give tab. If you're going to sow through Cash App, look for our proper logo, amen, New Bethel MB Church. Listen, if you're sowing electronically, I want you to put in the note section, an uh, outpour seed. This is an outpour seed. Amen. God has preached to us from his word. Amen. And we want to walk in righteousness. We don't want to walk in unrighteousness. Amen. And how many believe we heard the truth tonight? We heard God's word. Amen. And we thank you for your testimony. Amen. About your marriage. Amen. That blessed, I'm telling you, that blessed people that you don't even know about. Amen. That God kept you. God brought you back together. Let's give God praise for being a restorer. Come on, New Bethel. I say he's a restoring God. So tonight, if you're sowing, tonight we want you to sow. Whatever you're going to give tonight, we want you to sow that. Amen. And then we're going to pray over those seeds. We're going to give you an opportunity just to walk. Amen. Amen. We have our ushers. And typically what we do on Wednesday is that we just let you come and give. We want to continue that same phase online. We want you to just sow. Sow as an outpour seed. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that you rebuke the devourer for our sake. And you give us bread for our food. Thank you that we sow in faith. Thank you that we believe by faith that we receive everything we have. Father, these outpour seeds will continue. Hiyah. They will continue, God, the growth and the manifestation of your power. Thank you for the prophetic word that has went forward. We thank you that our second floor is paid in full, fully furnished, fully operational, that we are debt-free ministry, God, and we're able to save. So we give you glory for that. We ask you right now to smile and to breathe on the seeds that the saints of God shall sow. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Deacon Lavin is coming for your offerings. Sister Amos is coming for our scholarship dollar vote. Saints, wherever you are, just walk down. Come on. He'll keep you. Just keep your mind. Invite four people, family member, co-worker, a friend, somebody that's not saved, and we want to invite them to church. We want to pack this place out on Sunday. Amen. 
Can I see, can we say amen? Amen. amen. Awesome women's ministry on Monday. I think y'all had a great coffee conversation. Singles was here. Men's ministry was here. Monday was lit, y'all. It was, I mean, it was off the chain. All the people that were here, and God was getting the glory. So we thank God for you showing up. Amen. Thank y'all for having a great time. Uh, Reverend Jackson, thank you for coming and being with us. We give honor to your lovely wife again. Glory to God. New Bethel, thank you for showing up on Wednesday. Amen. And making sure you didn't preach to an empty room. We give God praise for that. Amen. And make the preacher feel good when he sees somebody. Glory to God. I want you to come back up and you pray us out. Amen. We give God glory. Any other announcements that I'm missing? I think we are good to go. Amen. You are blessed. The prophet is coming to pray us out again. We thank you for coming, man. Bless you. Pray us out. Was anybody blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Us preachers sometimes we uh, always wonder did they receive the word? If you receive the word, say yeah. yeah. All right, so precious Father, we thank you for bringing us here tonight, Lord, even as we go down from this place, but never from your divine presence. Oh God, we pray that each and every one be safe, and when they get home, God, they come home to everything being well. We ask the Lord that you keep that bullet in that gun. Lord, take that gun out of that man's hand. Oh, God, we thank you right now, Lord, for protecting us, Lord. We even speak that financial blessing on each and every soul that gave tonight. And we ask right now, Lord, that you continue to cause increase in the lives of your people. And we pray this special blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.